Hello, this is Chaplain Bob. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, today, we're going to do a study on the words, I am. Now, there's a woman named Gail Ripplinger. She did a wonderful series of books on the King James Bible. And one of the books she did was the language of the King James Bible. And she said the King James has a built-in dictionary oftentimes that if you look at the first instance that a word is used, um, that often within the verse before or after or in the verse itself, it'll explain the meaning of what an unusual word might be. So, so if you use like, for example, the blue letter Bible, um, look up to look up certain words, um, just know that if you look up a word, the first instance, oftentimes, if you look in that verse or that chapter, it'll explain what it means. So, okay, enough said. And uh, I would ignore the uh, critics of Gail Ripplinger. Uh, she has many. But um, in Genesis, verse 15, and I'm sorry, chapter 15 and verse 1, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. So here it is. The Lord said to Abram, who later he changed his name to Abraham, and told him, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. In verse 7, And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And in Genesis chapter 17 and verse 1, And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the mighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Now, in Exodus, chapter 3, verse 6, <clears throat> the Lord speaking said, <clears throat> excuse me, Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And in verse 8, And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now, in Exodus 3.14, what's really interesting is God has a conversation with Moses, and Moses says, when the children of Israel ask me who you are and what's your name, what am I going to tell them? 
And this is what God answered. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said thus, Shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Now let's go to the New Testament. In Matthew 3.17 And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So there was a voice from heaven that said, I am well pleased in his only begotten Son. I didn't know it, but there's 698 exact phrases of I am in the Bible. And we're definitely not going to look at them all. In Matthew 5:17, Jesus said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Matthew 10, 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am, I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Matthew 15, 24. But he, Jesus, answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 24, 5. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. In Matthew 27:43. When Jesus was up on the cross, this is what they said about him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. In Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. This is after... They were in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Judas had betrayed him, and the chief priests, the soldiers, the temple soldiers, the chief priests, had sent to capture Jesus. Uh, this is in Mark 14, 60 through 63. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But he, Jesus, held his peace and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, 
and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes and said, and saith, What need we any further witnesses? Ye have heard the blasph blasphemy, what think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. Jesus speaking to the Jews in John 5.43 says, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another come in his own name, him ye will receive. And in John 6.35, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. And then in verse 41, The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And in verse 48, Jesus said, I am that bread of life. Verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. In the eighth chapter of John, and every Christian should read this. If every Christian read the eighth chapter of John, uh, there wouldn't be any Christian Zionists. But in John 8, 23, Jesus and he said unto them, to the, Jesus talking to the Jews, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. And in John 8, 24, I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that, I am he, ye shall die in your sins. But then, uh, 28, Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. Now, something that's really interesting, in John 8, 56, Jesus talking to the Jews, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? And Jesus said, unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they, then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Now when Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am, don't think for a second that the, Jesus did, uh, the Jews didn't understand what Jesus was saying there. That's the reason why they picked up stones to throw at him. Because he was identifying himself as the I Am that spoke with Abraham. In John 9, 5, Jesus said, As long as I am in the world... I am the light of the world. In John 9, 39, and Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they 
which C, I'm sorry, for judgment I am come into this world that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. In John 10, 7, then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. Verse 10, The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Now this is all John chapter 10. Verse 14. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. Uh, verse 36. Say ye, of, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent in the, into the world. Thou blasphemest because I said I am the Son of God. So here they, he was being a, Jesus was being accused of being a blasphemer. John 11.25 and Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. John 12, 46. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me shall not abide in darkness. John 13, 13, ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say well, for so I am. John 13, 19, now I tell you before it come that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Now we're going to do some John 14, verse 3, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Verse 10, Believe thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Verse 11, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verse 20, And that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. John chapter 15, verse 1, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman, Verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. In John 18, when Jesus was in the garden, and Judas had betrayed him, and the temple guard had come, 
and well let's just read verse 5 they were uh, Jesus asked who they were looking for and they answered him Jesus is Nazareth Jesus of Nazareth Jesus saith unto him I am he and Judas also which betrayed him stood with them now in verse 6 as soon then as he had said unto them I am he they went backward and fell to the ground verse 8 Jesus answered I have told you that I am he if therefore ye seek me let these go their way in other words he was telling them take me and leave my disciples alone now I love this Pilate tried to let Jesus go three times but the Jews laid charges against Jesus and even threatened with Pilate with treason before Caesar if they let if he let Jesus go when he tried to crucify Bar uh, Barabbas and let Jesus go and then Pilate wrote the inscription Jesus is Nazareth King of the Jews but in John 19 21 then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate write not the king of the Jews but that he said I am king of the Jews and Pilate said what I have written I have written Pilate wasn't going to change a word on the road to Damascus Saul of Tarsus the persecutor of the true uh, church in Acts 9 5 he was struck with blindness and Saul says well let's read it and he said who art thou Lord and the Lord said I am Jesus whom thou persecutest it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks uh, verse 10 oh never mind so here it is Jesus um, Paul asked who this was called him Lord and the Lord said I am Jesus okay let's get down to the uh, the end of the study let's go to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 8 <coughs> Jesus talking I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the ending saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty now Alpha was the beginning of the Greek alphabet and Omega was the end of the uh, Greek alphabet so I guess in a way he's saying I'm A to Z now let's go to verse 11 saying I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and under Pergamos and unto Thyatira <coughs> and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea verse 17 and when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not I am the first and the last I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore amen and have the keys of hell and death 
Revelation 2, 23. And I will kill her children with death, and all the ch churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Not a good place to be if you don't have good works. Uh, Revelation 21 and 6. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Revelation 22, 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Last. Now, something you should know here, all these Hebrew roots people, uh, they want you to think that the New Testament basically is irrelevant, or if it is relevant, they want you to think that it was written in Hebrew and then it was translated into Greek. Uh, that's not true. That is absolutely not true. Um, you know why you know why Jews are Jews because they don't accept Jesus they don't accept him as Christ they don't accept him as Messiah and that's why they're Jews because they're still waiting for their Messiah there is not a Jewish New Testament now there's a a, a Jew I forget his name that took the New Testament and he just changed uh, the, the place where Lord and all that and he gave it some kind of a Jewish name but um, he took an English translation just deleted the word Lord in the uh, New Testament and just substituted Jehovah or whatever uh, words he decided to go in there but that doesn't make it it was not translated from the Hebrew because there is no Hebrew New Test New Testament it's Greek that's why Revelation 22 13 Jesus says I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end the first and the last because there is no Hebrew New Testament it's Greek and it's very possible at least some of the Greeks were divorced Israel in dispersion. All right, let's get ready to close the study. In Revelation 22 and 16, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And oh, by the way, Jesus says, I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Now, this is Jesus talking here. If you go to the NIV Bible, the New International Perversion, and you look up in uh, Isaiah 14, uh, they have the guy that fell out of heaven and they call him the morning star. Uh, and, but if you look at the King James, it translates it as Lucifer. Now, if you ask a Satanist who Lucifer is, they all know who Lucifer is. Okay? They even call there's even people that call themselves Luciferians. Okay? And they'll try to tell you, oh, well, that's a Latin word, and it doesn't belong in the English. English is full of Latin words. You can't even, law school is just full of all kinds of Latin words. English is full of Greek words. If you go to become a pharmacist, it's just, there's so many Greek words, it's unbelievable. English has got French, Spanish, 
German, um, all kinds of words from different languages. In addition to Latin and Greek. So when somebody tries to tell you that a word doesn't belong because it's Latin, what they're trying to do is tell you that um, they believe the NIV and that Jesus, as the morning star, fell from heaven. And what you ought to do is take your NIV Bible and burn it. And if somebody tries to tell you that, you've got to realize something. You're probably talking to a Luciferian that's trying to hide the issue. So get yourself a King James Bible so that you know in Revelation 22, the morning star is talking about Jesus. Not like the NIV in Isaiah 14. And in Isaiah 14 and the King James, you're talking, Lucifer is talking about, well, the guy that fell from heaven. And I think we all know who that is. So, all right. That's uh, the big study for today. I am. I hope you found it interesting and edifying. And, um, you know, by the way, I'm not a professional by any chance, uh, by any means. I'm a volunteer. And you've heard the old adage that you get what you pay for. Well, volunteers are unpaid, so you're definitely getting what you paid for. Nevertheless, all blessings, praise, and glory and honor come from and belong to Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. All glory be to him. In Jesus' name, amen.